a curfew enforced, the police patrolling the streets, locals building mile-long fences around the city in a desperate attempt to stay safe. However, there's no dangerous criminal on the loose, just a wild boar, an aggressive, voracious, and infectious wild boar. When thousands of them overrun the city at night, people have no choice but to hide. So how did it all begin? Well, it started with two key factors, the rapid urbanization and the regeneration of forests. Cities are expanding, but forests are also comfortable enough to breed in. So wild boar populations are thriving across Europe. In fact, there are increasingly more encounters with these creatures in major European cities like Berlin, Madrid, and Warsaw. Italy alone is now home to roughly one million wild boars, and they're causing mayhem by damaging crops and causing around 2,000 car accidents each year. And that's not all the trouble they cause. In Italy, wild boars create agricultural damage worth up to $22 million every year. That's because they're incredibly voracious creatures, ready to devour anything that comes in their way, even resorting to cannibalism when desperate. Furthermore, wild boars have an exceptional ability to adapt to almost any reasonable environment. This is why they're considered one of the most invasive species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Whether it's semi-arid plains, alpine forests, or marshy grasslands, wild boars thrive in almost any habitat. As long as there's food available, you can be sure wild boars will be fine there. But where did they come from? Historically, it's known that wild boars appeared in Southeast Asia, and from there they began to spread across the European continent. This happened about 5 million years ago, and quite quickly many civilizations began to consider wild boars as popular prey. At the beginning of the 20th century, human pressure, that is, active deforestation and rapid development of agriculture, led to the almost complete extinction of the species on the Italian peninsula. Only a few populations survived in Tuscany, southern Italy, and the Alps. However, after World War II, Italy experienced a gradual economic boom along with the urbanization of the population. The forests gradually regenerated and the wild animals returned. Wild boars thrived in the absence of gray wolves, their primary predators, and their ability to eat a wide variety of food sources allowed their population to grow significantly. Furthermore, people, especially hunters, actively encouraged the reintroduction of wild boars into unoccupied forests. And this is where it got us. There are now over 10 million wild boars in the European Union, and their population keeps on growing. This means that clashes between people and wild boars will become increasingly frequent. When these wild boars venture into cities, they become even more troublesome than rats or pigeons because of their larger size and more complex behavior. Wild boars in urban areas pose a genuine problem, and it's not limited to Europe alone. You can encounter them everywhere, whether it's Barcelona or Berlin, Houston or Hong Kong. These cities have witnessed groups of wild boars wandering the streets at different times of the day. The main reason for this urban takeover by wild boars is the uncollected garbage and people who willingly feed them. A recent study revealed that wild boars now inhabit 105 Italian cities, a stark increase from just two cities a decade ago. This phenomenon is not unique to Italy, and it's happening elsewhere, too. To get a sense of just how comfortable boars feel in urban areas, all you need to do is check out any video taken by regular people. Boars don't seem bothered by much anymore. One big reason is they've lost their fear of people. And this leads to some real chaos. Take Barcelona in 2016, for instance. The cops got 1,187 calls from people upset about wild boars causing trouble. These creatures were out there tearing up lawns, rummaging through garbage, tangling with dogs, stealing cat food, messing up traffic, and even slamming into cars. Back in 2013, a cop tried to shoot a boar with his service pistol, but ended up injuring his partner instead. I wouldn't be surprised if that boar had a good chuckle as it made its escape. Actually, Italy and Spain deal with the most boar-related issues, so efforts to address the problem are most intense in these countries. We've compiled statistics for these two countries, however, it's important to note that the issue affects many more countries. In Scotland, there have been recent reports of wild boars being blamed for the killing of sheep on local farms. It's worth noting that such behavior is uncommon for wild boars, although there have been occasional incidents in the past. 
Back in 2016, the Scottish Gamekeepers Association raised concerns about wild boars attacking and consuming livestock. One person even witnessed three wild boars intentionally going after a sheep. Other farmers mentioned that wild boars regularly prey on lambs, and in general, the increasing wild boar population in Scotland leads to chaos. After a wild boar invasion, fields get trampled and livestock get killed. Environmentalists don't believe this, though. They argue that while wild boars might scavenge dead sheep, it's rare for them to actively hunt and kill sheep. Furthermore, they point out that if such instances were common, someone would have captured them on camera a long time ago. Well, guess what? Steve and I actually found a video like that. Furthermore, wild boars are known to include hares in their diet, actively hunting them. A viral video featuring two small ponies coming to the rescue of a French-speaking couple from a charging wild boar took the internet by storm, and it's easy to see why. The boars seemingly appeared out of nowhere and made a menacing charge toward the camera, potentially leading to a tragic outcome. But here's where the ponies come in. They suddenly appeared and swiftly scared off the boar. A happy ending. However, experts suggest that the ponies' actions might not have been heroic in the human sense. Instead, they were likely following their natural herd instinct, perhaps mistaking the boar for another pony, and instinctively ran towards it. So it probably happened like that. The presence of the pony startled the boar, causing it to run away, and the pony instinctively followed, as typical animals behave. The grateful people just happened to capture it all on video. If you find it amusing that some hog can harm two adults, believe me, you wouldn't want to find out what these adorable critters are capable of doing to your feet. Unfortunately, I've witnessed such incidents. As is often the case with invasive species, the question naturally arises, why not consider eating those wild boars? After all, our ancestors have been doing it successfully for centuries. But here's the catch. In the past, wild boars weren't radioactive. Just recently, a group of scientists examined the meat of wild boars from southern Germany and discovered that it does indeed carry radioactive traces. That radioactivity stemmed from nuclear weapons testing. And it's important to note that the Chernobyl power plant disaster in 1986 has nothing to do with that. Indeed, that catastrophe unleashed a huge amount of radiation into the air around it. This radiation ended up polluting the nearby woods, farmland, and all living creatures, from livestock to people. The radioactive fallout from the incident traveled as far west as France, and many animals on the affected farms were born with abnormalities in the years that followed. Even though wild boars aren't farm animals, they too felt the impact of the radiation from Chernobyl. However, there are two crucial points to note here. First, after the explosion, radiation levels have generally gone down across Europe, except for wild boars in southern Germany. Second, scientists have come to realize that it's not just Chernobyl. Nuclear weapons testing shares the blame. 88% of the 48 samples of wild boar meat tested had increased levels of radioactivity in Germany, and all samples showed increased levels in Japan. The sample is not representative, of course, but the results are still concerning. It couldn't be that one particular species of animal was particularly good at absorbing radiation. So what was the reason? Well, it turns out it's all about truffles. Boars happen to be the only animals with a real love for truffles. That's why their meat still shows high radioactivity. These truffles are buried underground, acting like a sort of storage for radioactive particles. Then this radiation finds its way into the animal's body, and that's when scientists stumble upon the super radioactive meat. It's pretty straightforward. By the way, it's interesting that boars are more radioactive in winter than in summer. There's not enough food in winter, so they eat truffles more often. And yes, it's not clear which country's responsible for the increased animal radioactivity. The fact is that there's a huge upward draft after an explosion. By the time the fallout falls down to Earth, the radioactive material is evenly distributed in the upper atmosphere, so it's virtually impossible to attribute the effects to a certain test or country. Nonetheless, it wouldn't be wrong to suggest that humans are ultimately responsible for the existence of radioactive boars. And this is just one peculiar example of the oddities related to wild boars. In 2015, a bizarre and disturbing album of images was uploaded to Reddit. A set of photos featuring a wild boar carcass revealed something rather unusual. Instead of the usual white, the fat had a striking shade of bright blue, making it look far from safe to consume. This bizarre discovery sparked a public outcry, and eventually the blue fat was analyzed in the lab. 
However, despite their efforts, the experts couldn't name the exact reason behind the unusual color. It seems most likely that the culprit is the dye commonly found in rat bait. It's added to keep other animals from eating the poisoned meat, as the color will scare them away, but there's nothing that can stop the boars. The silver lining here is that the dose of poison isn't strong enough to kill a boar, but it does manage to tent their internal organs. Okay, let's assume you can't eat wild boars, but what if we just catch them instead? Well, it turns out it's not that simple, because sometimes these animals step in to save their trapped pals. In the Czech Republic, there was this incident where a mother boar displayed some impressive smarts and empathy by helping two young boars escape from a pickle. Scientists have never seen anything like that before. Here's what happened. First, those two young boars got themselves trapped with the cage door dropping shut on them. They started ramming into the cage walls and running circles. Then a few hours later, a group of eight boars, including an adult female, showed up near the cage. She got down to business, using her snout to remove some wooden logs that were blocking the trap door. Once she was done, those boars cracked open the door and made their getaway. The female rescuer might have felt empathy as she got goosebumps, which humans feel when they're in a certain emotional state. The rescue happened pretty fast, and it looked like the female boar had a clear purpose in mind and her actions were well thought out, so it seems she did all this for a reason. The researchers also suspect she might have had prior experience with opening cage doors. Why? Well, on two earlier occasions, the researchers were alerted that the animals were stuck, but when they got there, the cages were empty. That means someone had set them free. And just to mention, animals don't often engage in rescue missions like this. But wild boars have gone a step further and learned how to, how to use tools. Researchers observed Visayan warty pigs using sticks to dig and build nests at a zoo in France. In a series of later experiments, the researchers recorded that three out of four boars were scooping out soil with a stick in their mouths. This suggests that this behavior was not random, but was passed down within the same family. You might already know how awesome it is when animals can figure out how to use tools, but until recently, no one really thought that boars could do it too. I mean, they're just boars, right? However, let's circle back to the ways we deal with wild boars and the oldest and most tried and true method is hunting. But hunting can be quite a challenge. While it might seem simpler compared to chasing down other animals, wild boars have an uncanny sense of smell, making them tricky to follow. Plus, they can get very aggressive, which makes hunting riskier. To make matters worse, the traditional European hunting approach doesn't help much. People there often hunt for the thrill. They target big males as trophies, but this actually worsens the situation because it disrupts the family nucleus. When a male dies, it scatters the young females all over the territory, kickstarting their reproductive cycle a tad early, so it only gets worse. Here we go again, dealing with an invasive species that seems to multiply even faster when we attempt to get rid of it. It's becoming quite a classic. We have to admit that people indeed hunt wild boars, partly because boar meat boasts a unique taste that's quite different from anything else. Experts often describe its taste as rich and nutty, with no hint of gamey flavor. This meat's been considered a delicacy in various European countries for a long time. Hence, whenever the opportunity arises, people gladly eat wild boars, assuming they're not radioactive. Many European nations are now combating wild boar populations effectively by employing large, specialized traps. These traps were initially introduced and proved successful in the USA, and they're gradually gaining popularity worldwide. One of these traps can ensnare an entire boar family simultaneously. Once captured, the animals are gently put to sleep before being sold and savored as food. In essence, it's the best solution to the problem so far. Rome versus Boars Picnics were banned and garbage bins fenced off in much of northern Rome, all because authorities are struggling to control the wild boar population, and not just because the animals are wreaking havoc and eating everything. One dead individual was found to have the African swine fever. It was also forbidden to feed or approach the animals, and people walking on farmland or reserves in the affected areas were ordered to disinfect their shoes as a matter of urgency. All this happened after a curfew had been imposed to combat the wild boar invasion. First, the wild boar started attacking residents at night, and now the disease? The good news is it's not dangerous to humans. The bad news, there are infected wild animals roaming the city. Something really needs to be done about this. Boars versus Climate 
A study conducted a few years back found that wild boars release approximately 4.9 million tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere each year worldwide. How much is that exactly? To put it in perspective, that's roughly equivalent to the emissions of 1.1 million cars. This is because wild boars act like tractors, plowing through fields and digging up soil in their search for food. When the soil gets damaged like this, it releases carbon into the air, much like a car does. Now, there are a whopping 1.4 billion cars on the planet, so wild boars might seem like a drop in the bucket. However, their population is growing fast, and some experts worry it could become a climate concern, as if there weren't enough concerns already. The Wall versus Boars A few years ago, Denmark announced that it would build a 44-mile-long fence on its border with Germany to keep out, yes, wild boars. <laughs> all because they can carry a deadly infection. Yes, that African swine fever. Although no cases of African swine fever have yet been registered in Denmark, it could be transmitted from wild boars to domestic pigs, jeopardizing the local pig industry. There's no vaccine for the disease, so that leaves fences as the only option. Wild boar versus everyone. On June 2, 2023, a wild boar made an unexpected appearance on a beach at the Costa Blanca in Spain and injured two people there. Authorities even had to evacuate an area of the beach to catch the boar before anyone else was hurt. The video taken by eyewitnesses shows the boar attacking a policeman and an employee of the Animal Protection Agency. For two whole hours, the specialist tried to catch the animal, but try doing that to an aggressive boar weighing 220 pounds running around. Eventually, they had to take measures to subdue the animal. It's not entirely clear how it ended up on the beach. It supposedly tumbled down a cliff into the Seco River, and from there, it caused quite a bit of chaos along the beach. Basically, it behaved just like the average wild boar. See you later.